In today's video, I am going to be teaching you how to balance absolutely any camera on any given gimbal. All this coming up. Subscribe this channel, like and share. Gimbals have become very ubiquitous in recent times and in today's video, I am going to be teaching you how to balance this very old Sony Nex FX100 on this Zhiyun Crane S3 Pro. Now, all that I'm going to be sharing in this video is going to be quite universal. It can apply to the Ronin SC, the Zhiyun Cranes, the Crane S3, I mean, any modern gimbal that you have on the market. This is how most gimbals kind of look like. Of course, most of them are different. You don't usually have this side extension attached to it, but with this uh, Zhiyun Crane S3 Pro, we do have uh, this particular component attached to it. But you do see this particular sides uh, these are particularly the motors so typically you have a motor over here which controls how uh, it rotates around and this also is there and we also have another motor so typically you have three motor points in every given modern gimbal and that is exactly what you are seeing on this gimbal so first of all to balance any camera you need to make sure that the gimbal is uh, ready and in a rest position. In this particular gimbal, it's made much more easier because it has lockers. You can actually twist uh, this particular buttons to either lock a particular axis or open it. So as I've opened this particular axis, as you can see, it begins to rotate. What I want to do is that I'm not yet ready to balance this particular axis. All I need to do is just to lock this. So for now, it's not going to be rotating so that it doesn't really affect what we are going to do. So now that I have that locked, I'm going to open this particular side and of course I'm going to open uh, this particular one too okay so let me just have this uh, locked in so now I have both this side which means that it's not going to be rotating and again this is not also going to be going the other way around which is top and down but the only part I have opened here is here which goes top and down so what we are going to do now is to make sure that we mount the camera on this so let me open this and make sure that the unique thing about this particular gimbal is that you can move this closer or probably pull it further away so the camera we are using today as you can see um, ergonomically built is in a form of um, a cube and so if i put it this way um, it was going to give us a problem or let's say if the gimbal couldn't really uh, extend from left to right then it would it would have been very problematic for us fortunately like i said this can be able to go this way so it is going to allow us the opportunity to be able to comfortably put this on and as you can see we do have clearance here as you can see we do have enough space there so right away let's attach the quick release plates uh to the camera As you can see, we now have our quick release plate already attached to the camera. So I'm going to go ahead uh, and attach it to the gimbal. At this point in time, as you can see, um, we've attached it and it's kind of not quite really balanced on this, but as you can see, um, it's already hanging in there perfectly, but I feel like there's too much clearance space here, so let's move it. Good. So now that we have this attached, we are going to now begin the balancing process proper. So first of all, let's um, deal with the tilt axis. This camera is supposed to be able to stand this way. If I have it or if I move it to the top, it's supposed to be kind of stable. So I need to loosen this particular side and keep adjusting it until this camera is able to stay on top. Now, you may ask, why should you spend all the time to do this? That is because the motors would overwork themselves if you don't have this camera or any other camera you are mounting on any kind of a gimbal. If you don't balance it well, the motors are really going to suffer. And so that is why this particular process is really very important regardless of any kind of gimbal uh, that you intend to use to shoot. Go ahead and make sure that this camera doesn't drop off when you leave it at the top.
have to adjust this a little. So, as you can see, when I leave it, it's kind of tilting back. You don't really want that. It has to be able to stay like this, so that means it's still a little bit off. So let, let me continue adjusting it. And voila, we kind of have this particular axis locked in. So now what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to turn it this way. So as you can see, anyhow, you turn it a little. The next axis we are going to be dealing with is the row axis and once i open here you are going to realize that the camera is going to uh, tip off immediately uh yeah so we kind of want this to be straight we don't want it to be this way so the same principles kind of apply to this And that's perfectly done. As you can see, if I move it to any other angle, it's able to stay. I move it this way, it's able to stay. That means this particular axis, it's also done. So uh, now that we are done, let's log it in. And like I said, that's the unique thing about this particular gimbal. It also has lock, it has those lock points that after um, setting each particular axis, you can straight away be able to lock it in. Not every gimbal has this, but if your gimbal do have this, that is certainly a plus for you. So let's go ahead and balance this other axis as well. What happens with this one is that if I send it this way, as you can see, uh, it wants to turn around. No, it doesn't have to be so. So we need to actually set it so that when we send it to the right or we send it to the left it doesn't have to tip off so let's do this Almost there, almost there. Right, so we've just managed to do that particular axis as well and I've kind of logged that in as well. So now let's go ahead and open all our axes. So this was locked. Um, we open it. This was also locked. We also open it. But please, please, if you're using a gimbal like this, which has a lock point, please remember that anytime you lock in or after locking in all your axes, once you are done balancing it, please, please kindly remember to do open all of them because this is really very important. Or else if you put it on, you might end up damaging the motors on your gimbal. So we have this ready to go. So basically that is all the process. This is what you go through if you really want to balance a camera on a gimbal. However, there are certain key things that you actually need to really take note of. Now, if you're using an extra accessory to this camera or any other camera that you've attached to a gimbal, you need to make sure that as at the time of balancing, you need to have all those things attached to the camera. Because once you attach that particular element, it's going to throw the whole balance off again. Trust me, even a monitor, because um, a camera like the Panasonic G7, which is shooting me right now, I put it on such a, a kind of a gimbal like this, and 
I balance it without opening just uh, the LCD. And once you open the LCD to the side, you can imagine just the weight of the LCD, but it throws the balance off. So even, let's say, if I balanced it without this particular lens hood, once I put this lens hood back, it's going to tip off, almost letting the whole thing lose balance. So anything you have to attach to the camera, make sure you attach every single accessory to the camera before you begin uh, to do the balancing. Now, in this particular sense, the LCD on this camera is actually at the top here. So if I open this way, as you can see, even with that, can you believe that? It's, it's making it tip. So this is actually a very huge lesson, guys. Always make sure whether you want to have your LCD opened or let's say if it's a camera that the LCD opens to the left or you, have, you want to put a microphone on top or you have a lens hood or any other lens accessory or any camera accessory that you have, make sure it's attached to the camera. Make sure the camera is looking like how you want it to be before you actually balance it here. So it means I have to re-correct <laughs> the tilt axis once more because we have the uh, LCD opened before we can turn this on. So let's just do that again and we can turn this on. Yeah, so we have all this uh, kind of ready to go. So I do have a lens cap here. I just hope taking it off doesn't throw this balance again. Right, so that was really so light. So this is ready. So all I have to do is to put my camera on now. Um, this is a Sony FX100, like already established in the beginning of the video. So all I need to do now is just to put my gimbal on. And I have the on button here. So let's press it. And voila, our gimbal is ready to go. So let's try to turn it around and see. Right. So go back. Down. Uh, we can send it up. Right. Let me press record here so that you can kind of see what is happening. And uh, that is Akim there shooting the behind scene. Akim, say hi to us. <laughs> uh, yeah, we are shooting currently around the school. Scooch, say hi. <laughs> yeah, so they are also here. We are shooting just around the school area. And they are here to look at what we are doing. Say hi. <laughs> Probably um, I might not be able to carry the mic. So let me just do some test shots, walk around with this and you see how um, it kind of looks like. With 
So that is it basically. Um, you really always need to make sure that any gimbal you want to use, um, you need to go through this process. Balancing is more or less like um, an art. You can actually uh, escape this particular process in terms of using any kind of a gimbal. And I hope the tips that I've shared in this video are very useful. Uh, once again, just before we end, always make sure that if the gimbal do have access lock, once you are done balancing, make sure to always unlock those particular access that you locked. And guys, where else can you find us but on the African continent, guys? We just came here to shoot and they kind of came out to help because currently we are shooting around uh, their school and it's really very amazing to have kids like this who are interested. Which of you wants to become uh, a cinematographer in the future? Which of you want to shoot videos? Yeah, five of us. Five of you. Amazing, amazing. So make sure to watch the Africa Amaze channel on YouTube, okay? You will definitely learn a lot from there, okay? Right. So guys, thank you so much for watching as always. And if you do have any further questions, I do much appreciate it if you uh, hit me on Instagram at obl underscore junior or alternatively, you can leave them in the comment section below and I will gladly respond to every single one of your messages. If you did get a ton of information out of this video, then I'll do much appreciate it. If you do, click on the like button because it goes a long way in helping other people discover this channel on YouTube. As you can see, I'm really so tired. I'm panting because it's not really easy. It shows that I really do need lots of exercise. Thank you so much for watching. And from here, from the kids and everyone, we say, see you another time. Bye.